What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Death Road to Canada with Dog and Pony. I'm Dog and Pony. This is Death Road to Canada. I got a fresh cup of coffee, and we're continuing our game. We are four toilets away from a genie, and I've decided we're no, we're, we're gonna try to get it for uh, Trevor here. <clears throat> I think we want to go to the riled up apartment. I think we can handle it, and I think we need the food. And we're not gonna get much food in the bookstore. I mean. There will be like apartments around the bookstore, but I think we want to go to the harder encounter because it'll have more and better loot. I know the bookstore would train a stat for us, but because it's an unknown stat and it could be something entirely worthless, we're going to go rile up apartment. It's a thick, irritated swarm. That's not even that bad. Why is this a red encounter? I'll give Trevor the... Sturdy machete, but I don't think he needs it. I still think just using kung fu is better, but I'm nervous about that. And if you've been replying in the comments saying like, "Hey, just yeah, the, the machete's better. The machete's better." Or no, you're right. The kung fu is better. And I just haven't been responding. It's because I'm recording these way in advance. Also, this is not an encounter uh, where we're out on the street. We spawned right inside this apartment. It's a little unexpected. I'm sure the title of the events kind of tells you which it is, like an always be looting event versus a whatever choose your fate event or something like that. And um, I should know that by now. I just started to pay that close of attention when you're also saying everything out loud. If you were, uh, oh, I got a magazine. See, that's good. Now we get to choose who gets it. Modern Hunter, that's going to uh, Jolin here because she's the only one that can shoot and it's definitely gonna improve our shooting. Oh, if, if you were wondering if I've kept you in suspense over the past two days, um, I ended up brewing eight cups of coffee, not 10, not 12, just eight. I think that's a pretty decent amount. For one thing, it's uh, the largest amount that I can make without having to grind the, the beans in two separate batches. <clears throat> it only fits enough for eight cups, so if I wanted to do ten, I'd have to do two grindings of like five. If I want to do twelve, I have to do two grindings of six, but eight I can do all at once. And I was being a little bit lazy. But also, I just don't need 10 cups of coffee in a day. And it's actually, it'd be 11 because I did have that can of coffee as well. Yeah, I think we're, we're getting pretty far ahead on these. My batch recordings, my pre-move batch recordings are well ahead of live at this point. So these will come out in like a week. Maybe more. Um, still got a lot left to do before the move, but a lot of it's getting knocked out today. This is episode three of six being recorded today. We got some junk from that shelf. Oh well. And then I got some nuclear throne to do today. Then I've got a uh, streamline live stream today. Some ouchy spray. Please pick this up. I don't wanna. Okay. Um, all set. Okay. Yeah, streamline live stream, and then, and then, once that's all done, I am finally going to be able to play Mad Max for the first time. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm going to record while I play, but I don't know how the quality is going to be, and if it's really low quality, I don't want to put it up. Um, but I think I'll, I'll try to make a regular series out of that. This will be a two to three part kickoff that I'll probably release once a week. Let me just make sure I got every door. Um, once a week, starting the week I move in the normal time slot of the dog and pony show. That's Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, let's go. I'm moving to a new time zone. I'm going to try to keep the same schedule now so just base everything on eastern time 
but I will, y you know, maybe switch that up at some point to, to make my life easier. Jolyn gets to read Mon Modern Hunter. She absorbs the content. Sadly, she ruins the magazine for others due to her grimy fingers. Her shooting goes up. One. That was a useless magazine. I mean, not useless. We, we like that. We're good with the shooting now, but I wish it did, like, composure or something. I'm going to drink a little bit of coffee here. Uh... The group gets a peaceful moment to rest in a safe house. We're going to exercise for strength. That sounds incredible. Uh, Jolin can use it, Will can use it, and Trevor can use it. We'll be pretty decent after we do this. Repeat until mega buff strength. Not quite maxed out for Trevor. It's the max default value, but as a berserk martial artist, and as you know, he can uh, overtrain that by one and fitness by two, though his fitness is already overtrained one. We are just going to go to sleep. We don't need to tinker. We're just gonna go to sleep. We're low on food. Really need to get some more of that. Free healthcare in Obama's America. I still don't get those comments, but whatever. It's not even free. That's not how that works. The group drives into a new city. Noises from the car have already started to draw attention from the undead. We're gonna go to the apartment with help banner. Uh, if the, the dog won't give us a reward. So we could recruit the dog, obviously. But I think it's gonna be a better idea to um, get a person, see if they're good or not, and then recruit them or take their reward. They might give us 10 food, you know? And that's a pretty decent amount. It, on top of whatever we loot here. We're gonna go to the apartment with the help me banner first because I wanna have a fourth person in our group, whether or not they're good. Uh, doesn't really matter. I just wanna have them helping with combat. And if they're not good, Potentially just being a distraction, like the game says there. Four shotgun shells, some food, which is good. That's what I wanted out of the kitchen. And gas, fantastic. Absolutely great. I really wanted just more food, but that's cool too. I just want to have enough to finish the run and trade a little bit in the last shop. We're at uh, three days to go. And I needn't remind you, but I will anyway that this is three days to go on our last difficult mode. Our last of our hard modes for our Omega Street. I am beyond excited. Uh, no, I'm just excited. I wouldn't say beyond. I did say beyond, but I wouldn't say it again. Well, I've said it a bunch of times now, but I wouldn't use it to describe how I feel, except I'm beyond mildly excited. I'm excited. I'm a normal, safe, healthy amount of excited. Okay, that, that was a useless toss there. We do want to open the toilets if we get the opportunity. We haven't seen any to open, but we're only four away. I said that already, but I want to reiterate. Four away with three days to go. We should be able to get that at least twice over. There should be like eight more toilets, especially in a place like this with a lot of bathrooms and all the different uh, buildings. I can't believe we didn't get one there. Okay, this is uh, just a hallway here. Some ammunition, never... I gotta stop using that expression, never hurt anybody. Um, it did, actually, the zombies. It hurts the zombies real bad. Let's pick up the gun. Thank you, Will. I know you can't use it, so I appreciate that you picked it up anyway. We need something to use our pistol, or yeah, our pistol ammo with. We don't have anything better than a regular old pistol. Can't even sell the pistol. That's how bad it is. But that's fine. Now we can go through bullets. If we run out of shotgun ammo, which we probably won't. Though if we get like an auto shotty or something, we might. Three toilets to go. Got to remember to talk to the genie with Trevor. I mean, it's not like a one-off. It's not like you have to make your wish right away. You could just say, leave for now, and then come back with Trevor. Just remember to make the wish with Trevor. I think whoever's talking to the genie gets the wish. It's not like uh, training in a camp where you get to then decide later. It might be, but I'd rather not take that risk. We could get it here. We could get it here. Not in this toilet, but in this... Okay, in that toilet? That was weird. I guess I opened two toilets before we got to this town? 
It's a little odd. I didn't realize that. Not odd that we did it, just odd that I didn't realize it. Alright, the wishing toilet. When Trevor opened the toilet, a magical genie appeared. Thanks for freeing me from the toilet, it says. Now make a wish. Immortality. Trevor's vitality increases. Very good. Uh, he's a little bit more gray than previously. And... He's a little bit more, uh... Alive than before. As well. He's got more... Hit points. He's got two instead of one. He's twice as likely to survive now. That's not actually true. When you consider that taking damage means, typically, if it's from zombies, taking more damage. If you're going to take one, you're probably going to take two. Oh boy. Not always. Sometimes you make a dumb mistake and take one and then immediately run out of it. But if you're taking it and not because you did something stupid, it means there's a big crowd. And that means probably dying. All right, medical supplies. If we could get another couple toilets, that'd be great because we could start charging it up for the next genie. I still find it very strange, though kind of nice. I, I like it. The more I play, the more I like the fact that it's not random. Toilet genies happen every 100th toilet exactly once on the hundredth toilet it's not a one in a hundred chance it's the hundredth toilet and it it allows me to actually strategize it's just weird because this game is you know overall randomly generated and that seems like something that would be random but it's not it's a little weird You know what I'm saying? Like, in a game that relies heavily on random encounters, like that's the point of the game is that it's one random encounter after another after another. Um, one of the strangest of all the encounters, the Toilet Genie, isn't random. Once every hundred toilets, but it allows you to, you know, have a little bit of strategy. No, like when we did it with Nomi, we, uh, we were saying, eventually we will get Nomi. Maybe it'll be 50 runs from now, maybe it'll be two runs from now. Um, but we've got to open two more toilets, so once we get him, we'll be able to get the genie and increase his health and get an achievement. And that's exactly what happened, and we got it a lot faster than 50 runs. So that was pretty nice. Is there one more apartment over this way? I want to say there is, but... Mostly just because I'm trying to be optimistic here. There's not. Nah, it's closed off. Oh, oh, no. Okay, let's go. I think that's everything. And if not, it's enough. Let's get in. New guy. Jeez, you got our ice cream truck all damaged. 14 food is more than I thought we picked up. Nine gas is whatevs. Wow, Connor catches up with the group at a safe spot. He offers a reward and thanks for saving him. He's not a good man. Medic, he's not a good mechanic, he's not good at shooting, his strength is okay, but his fitness isn't. We might do group strength training. That's two in a row. Maybe not in a row, but that's two group strength trainings very close to each other. And everybody is still capable of gaining strength, so we're doing that. I think um, everybody having one more strength, the three of us having one more strength, is better than having a fourth group member. Combat wise, food wise, everything. That's awesome. And two of us are now maxed. Maxed out? I think I think uh Trevor just got to flashing green. Yes, he did. Okay. So Jolin can't overtrain strength as far as I know. I mean she could overtrain fitness, so maybe. I don't know. Misplaced keys. The group can't find the car keys. After a while, they spot the keys laying inside a gator's open mouth. After most of the humans disappeared, alligators started spreading across the entire east coast. It's rumored the gators may eat zombies and car keys. Uh, Jolene, Jolene, Jolene is going to tire out the gator. Boom. Got the keys. Slipped out of its mouth. All right.
The group finds a cabin in the woods. Nobody's gonna go out and chop wood. Because we don't want anybody to be tired. Despite the fact that Will would gain strength from it, we don't want him to be tired. Um, I know how that encounter works now. Look at me. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. We can go to a busy hotel or a swarmed apartment. Uh, I really don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Let's just go to the swarmed apartment. It's a very thick swarm, but they're calm. We're going to visit the apartment building. Oh, it's got one charge. I guess we'll keep it with us, but we probably uh, won't need it here. It's one charge on our ouchie spray. It's good to keep with us because now that uh, Trevor can be healed, we if he takes one damage, we want to ouchie spray the crap out of him right away. We'll go this way. There's a, a lot of rooms for us to go to. Doesn't really matter what order we do them in. I think we're going to be perfectly safe no matter what. Not that many zombies are going to spawn. It's a very thick swarm, which isn't that bad, despite how it sounds, not that many. And uh, they're all calm. So we, we want to get through it quickly, but it's not going to be that bad. Eventually, they'll get more riled up. But for now, it's fine. And I don't think it's going to become an issue. We'll go this way. A lot of forking pads here. Which is a lot of potential for loot. Maybe we'll get... Uh, what do we even want? I mean, I'd love to get another opportunity to buy a chainsaw. So more food. Um, or buy a better gun. So more food. Uh, we're not that low on gas, I don't think. Yeah, we're not that low on gas, so... If we could find a little bit, that'd be fantastic, but it's not a deal breaker here. Ooh, see, that's good. We're, we're all set now. We're set for the rest of the run with that one extra gas there. Gonna throw that that way. Gonna take out that lone zombie with the chair. Like that uh, ricochet shot there is a, a twofer. The, the chair hit the zombie. If you weren't watching very closely, this is for you. The chair hit the zombie. Then, thank you for picking up that shotgun, we can sell it. Uh, then the chair hit the wall, then the chair hit the zombie again, killing the zombie and breaking the chair. It was a pretty cool shot. And then uh, Trevor went and swung at it, just to finish it off. Will is using Kung Fu, is he holding anything? I want to know what's better than... Okay, he's holding a, a gun and an ouchie spray. Neither of those are as good as his fists. Good to know. I'll pick this up, just in case. I didn't think a lot of zombies would have piled up, but it's, it's nice to be safe. They might come in through that front door, and we were in that little fork for quite a while, so. Better safe than sorry, as they say. Wait, is that a magazine? No, it's just a bottle of pills. I didn't want to break the magazine, so I wanted to not swing at the zombies right there, but ended up just being unbreakable loot. We're getting a lot of rifle ammo. Hopefully we get a rifle sometime soon. Hopefully it's not a cowboy rifle. Something better than that would sure be nice. How much rifle ammo do we have in the car? 182. That's a pretty good amount. If we got a minigun or an opportunity to recruit Rambo, thereby receiving a minigun. Was there anything down here? No. Okay. <clears throat> Making sure we didn't miss a door. We'll have plenty of ammo for Rambo uh, if, if we get him. Or just a, a minigun without a, a Rambo attached to it. Which we don't have anyone that can do a great job with it, but Jolin would, be, would do okay. And that's enough for me. You could get an excellent sharpshooter just by chance as well. Just encountering them. Or in a camp. Uh, usually the last shop has a couple people to recruit. Which is nice. Because then... Uh, if you're solo going into the last few encounters, you have a chance to not be. Um, and it's usually two different people. Uh, either a rare character or familiar face on one side of the camp. And a uh, random character on the other side of the camp, I believe. 
That might not be how it always works, but that seems like a, a pretty typical way for it to spawn. Recently, anyway. And, uh... Yeah, like, if they die after, or if they die during the first siege, or during the second siege, you can't replace them anymore. No new characters will spawn after that. But it's nice to be able to... <clears throat> get a couple extra if you need it we've already done our pure solo run so never have to go it alone again maybe we will at some point but manufacture ourselves some challenges like that i don't know depends all right keep it moving Okay, that zombie is no longer interested in us. Good to good to see. Maybe he's uh, renouncing his wicked ways as a zombie and returning to humanity. Who knows? Maybe zombieism is a choice. I I, I have no idea. I would imagine it's a disease, uh, some sort of post-death reanimation, uh, but. You never know. You never know with these kinds of things. There's no uh, explanation of the origin of the zombies in the Death Road lore, so... How are we supposed to know? Whoa! I think we just picked up some gas. That's what it looked like. And now we have 20-something gas. I saw that. Yeah, 23? That's more than we had. We had one previously, so I think we picked up gas when we walked into that closet. A lot going on in that closet. There was a... Uh, Gas canister, I think there was like a broom on the ground, and a zombie. Yes, let's go, everybody's here. We got 11 food, 23 gas, four medical supplies, and that is all for now, but thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more in the future, and I will see you in the next episode.